I believe this is a much needed message in this hour. Uh, a lot of folks don't know that temptation is not a sin. Temptation is not a sin. It's giving in to the temptation that is sin. And so, if you can stop the tempter, then you're not going to sin against God. See, I've heard many people believe that temptation itself is a sin. Well, I was tempted by the devil, or I was tempted. Well, you haven't sinned because you were tempted. You sin once you've given into the temptation. And so, today we're going to learn how to overcome Satan, to overcome that old serpent, that dragon, the devil, the tempter, uh, the same way Jesus did. So, we're going to begin in uh, a familiar portion of Scripture, but I think I'm going to share some things with you maybe you never saw before. So, we're going to begin with Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Right there we see Jesus being tempted of the devil. Has he sinned? The scripture says... He was without sin, tempted in all points, yet without sin. Isn't that what the Word of God says? Jesus was tempted in all points, yet without sin. So here we see Jesus being led by the Spirit to be tempted of the devil. So obviously, temptation is not a sin. Now, I will like to say this before we go into the message, that Jesus did say, pray that you not enter into temptation. Amen. So, there is a deliverance from even the temptation. It's one thing to be uh, delivered from being tempted and giving in to temptation, it's a whole other thing to be delivered from the temptation itself. Now, let no man think that when he is tempted, he's tempted of God, because God cannot be tempted and he does not tempt. Okay? But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust. That's what the Word of God says. So you can't even be tempted if there's nothing in you to be tempted by. So the devil's not going to even bother tempting you if there's nothing in you to be tempted. So doesn't it make sense that you and I would make sure there's nothing in us to be tempted? Now Jesus said, the devil's coming, coming, but he has nothing in me. That doesn't mean the devil gives up doesn't mean that the devil's not going to tempt you. He's going to look for a way in. He's going to try to find an inroad. And even though there was no possibility of Jesus ever sinning or being tempted to sin against God, we see the devil still tempted him. If that doesn't show you who the devil is. If that doesn't give you a glimpse into who really the devil is. Here he is tempting Jesus, the one that can't be tempted, the one that has no sin, that could never sin, and he's still tempting him. You think the devil's going to give up on you? You think the devil's going to quit? So let's see how Jesus overcame the tempter. And when the he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hungered. Now let me just spend a moment there on fasting. I know we don't want to talk about this subject. Let me tell you this. Jesus did not fast 40 days and 40 nights on his own. 
Notice what it says in Matthew 4, verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. The same one that led Jesus to be tempted of the devil is the same Spirit that led Jesus to fast for 40 days and 40 nights in preparation to overcome the devil. Now, the Lord led me to a fast. I fasted 10 days. It was a fast the Lord led me to do. And I was able to do it without any problems. Never had a desire for food the whole 10 days. That was supernatural. That was something God did. I would not advocate to any of my listeners to fast without being led by God. It, you're, you're, you're subject to failure. I mean, you are just doomed before you even get started. Let me explain something to you about fasting. You, we, we don't fast to get God's attention. We don't fast to get an answer from God. Listen to me. We fast to get into a place to believe God. Are you listening? We, we cut off the flesh. We starve the flesh. We fast so that the flesh is weakened, so that our spiritual man can grow. Now, if that's the case, then we still have to feed something, right? If we're not feeding the flesh, what are we feeding? In that time, while you're not feeding your flesh, you better be feeding your spiritual man. That's how you overcome the devil. That's how you overcome Satan. Notice what happens here when the devil tempts Jesus to eat after he comes off his 40-day fast. And anybody out there that's thinking about fasting, remember, it's not going on to the fast. It's not starting the fast that's difficult. It's coming off the fast that's even more difficult because your body begins to be hungry again and you've got to show discipline and not feed that hunger the way it wants to be fed. So 40 days after Jesus has fasted, his hunger returns to him. That's when the devil tempts him. He doesn't tempt him at the beginning of the, uh, of the, of the fast. He, begins, he, he tempts him at the end of the fast. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Now, Jesus is hungry. His physical body is hungry. He hasn't eaten in 40 days and 40 nights. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. We're not talking about the Son of God and His Spirit. We're not talking about the Son of God here. We're talking about this natural body that the Son of God is housed in, right? We're talking about this natural man is hungry. So... What does the what does the Son of God say? But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Do you think that just because Jesus was fasting for forty days and forty nights that he wasn't eating? Did you, did you ever think that Jesus was just totally, completely cut off from food? Well, I will show you he wasn't. He was eating, folks. He was eating during that whole 40 days and 40 nights. Did you know that? Please listen to this message. It will help you. It will cause you to grow like never before. Jesus was eating, brothers and sisters. Listen to what he says again. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but, but, by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Even though Jesus was not eating physical bread, listen to me, he was 
feasting. He was feasting. During that whole 40 days and 40 nights, he was eating, brothers and sisters. He was feasting. Let's look at John chapter 4, verse 32. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. I told you you're going to hear some things you probably never heard before. Hallelujah. So let's this is this takes place after uh well let me maybe we'll just read this whole This is after the woman at the well where Jesus meets the woman at the well. Let's start out um praise the Lord. Let's start out at John chapter 4 verse 29. This is the woman at the well. She goes out telling everybody that Jesus is the Christ. She now understands that he's not just a man. And she's drank of that living water. John chapter 4 verse 29 says, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is this, is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. Now notice what it says. In the, mean, in, in the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. Eat something. He's not eating. He's not eating physical food. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him anything to eat? Listen. Jesus saith unto them, My meat, my food, my meat, is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Now, look at the verse of scripture again. When the tempter came to Jesus... Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Every word. Are you one of those that just hangs on, I mean, just every single word that's falling from the mouth of God and you're just there to catch it? Like raindrops, like like dew falling, just like, just like, you understand what I'm saying, folks? Are you there ready to catch every single word, not miss one word that falls from the mouth of God? Every single word, not allowing one word to slip, not one word's getting past you. You're going to receive every bit of that word from God. Amen. Are you that attentive? That when you're listening to Brother Joseph, every single word, you're, you're, you're there to catch every word. You're not allowing any word to slip. You want every single bit of the ingredients of that meal. You want all the spices. You want everything that's there. Every bit of that flavor. Every bit of that juice. Every single part. You don't want to lose nothing. Amen. That's every word. That proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So Jesus was feasting while his physical body was being starved. And that's why when the tempter came, Jesus overcame the tempter. If you're going to overcome the tempter, you got to feed that spiritual man. Amen? You're going to have to get strong spiritually. And you're going to have to cut off that physical man. But let me tell you again. Make sure you're led of the Spirit. Make sure it's the Holy Ghost. Brothers and sisters, you're never going to ever please God by initiating a fast or initiating anything for that matter. You must get into a place to where God initiates you, where the Lord is the one initiating you into a fast, into anything. He must be the leader. He must be the one that's leading. Don't just try to go out after this message and try to fast. 
I see a lot of people do that, and they fail in the first few hours, and the devil's right there to beat on them. God never called you to that fast anyway. Folks, I told you when the Lord called Brother Joseph to a 10-day fast, not one time did I ever have any desire to eat physical food. In fact, I would deliberately sit down with everybody while they were eating their physical food, and it wouldn't even bother me. Why? Because I was feeding on the will of God, because I was doing the will of God. Now look at the verse of scripture where Jesus talks about overcoming. Amen. Hallelujah. In the book of Revelation, what did Jesus say? And some of you know where I'm going with this. Praise God. Revelation chapter 3. Praise the Lord. And verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. How did Jesus overcome? How did he overcome the tempter? He feasted. He feasted. And the very thing that Jesus feasted on is how he overcame the tempter. It is written. It's not just by memorizing scripture. You've got to eat the word. You've got to devour the word to where your spiritual man is feasting. Are you listening? I remember one time I was sitting at my desk in my study and the Lord spoke to me. The Holy Ghost came by and he spoke to me and he said, eat the word. I never heard that before. I was just reading the scripture and the Lord came by and he says, eat the word. It's the same thing he said to the prophets in the Old Testament. He said, eat the roll. Amen. Eat it up. Oh, brothers and sisters, if you and I will stop living on bread alone, and then we'll start living on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, hallelujah, we'll grow. We will grow into that spiritual man that God would have us to grow into. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. It is so important that you and I grow spiritually if we're going to overcome the tempter. He does not stand a chance, brothers and sisters, if we will develop, if we will spiritually grow. Amen. Praise God. I know that many of my listeners do not eat the word. I know that you read the word, you try to memorize the scripture, you try to do your best, but you don't realize that is your food spiritually. Amen. Even Paul said, he said, at a time when I would feed you with meat, he says, I, you still have need that I eat, that I give you milk. What's he talking about? The milk of the word versus the meat of the word. When are we going to begin feasting? When's our spiritual man going to start eating at the table of the Lord? Amen. Jesus said, I'll sup with you and you'll sup with me and you, I will make you an overcomer. Hallelujah. I remember my pastor, he asked God one day, he said, Lord, how do I get your people to grow? And the Lord said to my pastor, he said, how did you get your boys to grow? How'd you get your sons to grow? He said, I fed them. You didn't pull on their arms. You didn't pull on their legs. No, you fed them. And that's what God said to my pastor. Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. That's what Jesus said to Peter. If you love me, feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. Folks, I'm going to say it again. You don't grow by receiving the word of God only. No, 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 no. Listen. The scripture says, by speaking the truth in love, you grow thereby. When Brother Joseph shares the word with you, you got you to gotta share that word with somebody else. That's how you grow. 
Oh, yes, you've got to internalize the word. The word becomes part of you. You receive that engrafted word with meekness. You be- receive that nature of Christ. And then when you open your mouth, you share Christ with others. It may be as simple as saying good morning. Amen. But you're sharing spirit and not flesh. You understand? Jesus said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Do you realize just a good morning in the spirit can bring a person to Jesus? They can taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. That the wisdom of God would proceed out of your mouth. That blessing would proceed out of your mouth and not cursing. Oh, praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, you and I need to develop. We need to grow up spiritually. Amen. So out of our belly will flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. When somebody's cursing us, when somebody's being mean to us, amen, that the blessing of God would flow out of us and overcome evil with good. Amen. It's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. How did Jesus overcome? He filled himself with the word. You say, well, Brother Joseph, he is the word. That's true. But remember, Jesus overcame with the word of the Father. Amen. He lived by the word of the Father. You and I are to live by the word of God every single day, brothers and sisters. God's word every single day. Hallelujah. Jesus said, these words I speak are not my words. It's the words of the Father. There's a good message right there for you out there that maybe have been struggling with that or you have somebody that you're trying to reach that believes there's no such thing as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost as three separate persons. Folks, there's too many scriptures. There's too much there that reveals the difference between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You know, I don't even waste my time anymore with people that want to say there's no uh, Godhead, that there's there's no three separate persons in the Godhead. I'm going to tell you people, Jesus makes it very clear. When he's in the garden praying, he's praying to the Father. Amen. He's talking about the glory that he had with the Father before the world was. What, do you think God is schizophrenic or something? No. The Son of God in that garden before he went to the cross was praying to the Father. Are you listening? That wasn't the physical Jesus praying to the Father. That was the Son of God. He said said that I would be restored to the glory that I once had with you before the world was. Oh, praise God. Jesus said if you deny the Father, you deny the Son. You deny the Son, you deny the Father. Amen. It's what the Word of God says. Be beware. And if you speak against the Holy Ghost, that's blasphemy. Are you listening? You can't speak against the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. No, you can't. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, more than ever, we need to be feeding, feasting on the Word. Amen. Not on the opinions of men. Get away from the opinions of men. Get away from the commentaries. Amen. Shut down the commentaries. Close the commentaries. Put away the commentaries. It's just quail, brothers and sisters. Open your heart and receive, thus saith the Lord, the word of God. Receive the engrafted word with meekness. Hallelujah. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and to him and will sup, sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and sat down with my Father in his throne. This whole thing is about feasting on the word of God, becoming strong in the power of his might. Amen. You feed spiritually on God's word, on God's nature, receiving his spirit, receiving his life. Amen. And that you become strong spiritually. 
You can overcome Satan. You can overcome the world. You can overcome sin. You can overcome the flesh. Praise God if you will become strong in the spirit. Hallelujah. Listen, every time you're tempted, every time you're tempted, God makes a way for you to escape. Now, whether you choose to take that way of escape, that's up to you. But God makes a way every single time that you may be able to bear it. Every time you're tempted, God makes a way for you to escape. Are you listening? The scripture says that there is a temptation coming upon the whole world to try them that are upon the earth. And Jesus said, watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape, to escape the temptation and stand before the Son of Man. He's making a way to escape. How many know He is the way? He's the door. He's the escape route. If we will go through Christ, through that narrow gate, that leads to life, if you and I will press toward that mark, towards that goal of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, listen to me, that narrow gate leads to life. It leads to eternal life. Amen. It, it, it's an escape route out of this world and into that world. Hallelujah. You can't take your fleshly body. You can't take the natural with you. Amen. You've got to receive that glorified body if you're going to enter through that narrow gate that leads to life. Now, we know there's all kinds of counterfeit out there, men looking for wormholes, men looking for gateways. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. There's only one way to leave this world and enter into that world where Jesus Christ is is. Amen. And that's through the narrow gate that leads to life. That's through that spiritual gateway, through Jesus, through his word. Hallelujah. Through the power of the word of God being transformed as you pass through the flaming sword that keeps the way of the tree of life. That flaming sword will transform you. It'll change you. Amen. Into the same image and the same likeness. It's not some circle, amen, of water like you see on stargates and all these things you're not passing through that kind of water you're not going through the ocean or through the sea amen you're not going through some some technological thing you're going through the word through the word hallelujah you got to pass through the word it's through christ he's the way he's the gateway he is the doorway we all must enter in through him praise the lord you can't take your physical body jesus said to peter he says where i'm going you can't follow me now but you'll follow me later hallelujah flesh and blood flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. If you think you can enter into his kingdom with your flesh and blood, you are deceived. That's why we must be born again. That's why you must be born of the incorruptible seed. But beyond that, you must, your mortal mortality must be swallowed up in life, folks. Listen to me. This is not some strange gospel. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the truth we find in the King James Version of the Bible, that mortality must be swallowed up in immortality, that life, it's all swallowed up in life. Glory to God, brothers and sisters. There is a gateway. There is a doorway. You can't see it with your physical eyes. Amen. And it's the Word of God Himself through the Word, through the Lord Jesus Christ. We enter in through Him, through His voice, through His words. Hallelujah. We're being transformed by His very words, by the water, the washing of the water of His Word. Hallelujah. That's how we're born again not of the water of the mother's womb or the water of the sea or the water of, uh, of some stargate. That, no, listen to me. It's the word. It's the washing of the water of the word. D did you know that the water of the word, did you know that the laver in the Old Testament is a type? They filled that laver with water. 
And at the bottom of the laver, there were looking glasses, women's looking glasses, mirror. There was a mirror at the bottom. And the priest would come and wash themselves in the laver, in the water of the laver. And they would see themselves when they looked down in because of the mirrors in the bottom of it. Listen, that's a type of the word. Amen. The washing of the water of the word is what prepares us for the next step, which is the which is the altar, which is a type of the cross. Glory to God, that flesh has got to be crucified to move on to the next step, which is the altar of incense. And the altar of incense is a type of prayer. That's where the incense is, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. And then you move on to the holy place and then into the holy of holies. Glory to God, brothers and sisters. All these are types. In the New Testament, Jesus has fulfilled every single one of those in the Old Testament. Now you don't have to go through all those steps anymore. All you do is come through Jesus. You come through his word, that living word, that quicken word, that rhema word. And that's what transforms us. Amen. Through the washing of the water of the word brings us into the holy of holies, into the glory of God where we're changed, where we're transformed. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise God, brothers and sisters. Thank God for the blood of the lamb at the, at, that we receive at the altar. Hallelujah. That, that blood that was spilt. Amen. Glory to God the washing of the water of the word and the blood of Jesus at the altar and then prayer. Entering into the holy place where the table of showbread is. That's where we feast on the word of God. That's where the candlesticks are to reveal the word of God. Amen. The table of showbread. That's where we feast. We sit at the table of God and we feast there. Amen. We feast glory to God, people. And then that's what makes us strong and makes us courageous so we can enter into the holy of holies boldly coming into the presence of God. In his presence, there's fullness of joy but if you go in there with sin you'll die you'll die if you enter into the presence of God with sin in your life if the high priest was to go into the holy of holies with with sin he would have died are you listening he took it very serious and I wonder how many of us take it serious when we come into the presence of God do you partake of communion unworthily do you partake of the holy things of God unworthily? You're drinking damnation to yourself. It's serious, people. It's a very, very dangerous thing to touch the things of God when you're not right with God. He's holy. He will not in any way hold you guiltless. You will pay. You can't touch the holy things. You cannot partake of holy things and have sin in your life. You must be born of the incorruptible seed of God's word and transformed and changed if you're going to be in his presence. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. All the things we read in the Old Testament are all types. The ark is a type. Listen to me, people. It's all types. Types and foreshadows of what was to come. Jesus fulfilled all those types. Every single type has been fulfilled in Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Do not leave the simplicity that's in Christ Jesus. Amen. Don't go back under the law. Don't go back to trying to keep... Amen. The ceremonial laws like so many are today. Don't, don't go back to trying to keep the feasts. Amen. Keep the feast with unleavened bread. Amen. Sincerity and truth. Praise the Lord. All those today that are going back under the law, do they hear what the law says? The law says pay all. You can't escape that. But grace says all is paid. Don't leave the simplicity that's in Christ Jesus. All has been paid. It's all been paid. It's free, freely given to us to receive, to sit down and feast. And I mean feast at the table of the Lord. Hallelujah. Feasting on his 
own divine nature. You'll live by Him. Amen? Hallelujah. He lives and you'll live because He lives, you live. Feast on Him. Receive Him. Receive every word that proceeds out of His mouth. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. I want more of Jesus, more and more and more. I want more of Jesus than I ever had before. I want more of His great love, rich and full and free. I want more of Jesus, so I'll give Him more of me. I want more of Jesus, more and more and more. I want more of Jesus than I ever had before. I want more of His great love, rich and full and free. I want more of Jesus, so I'll give Him more of me. Hallelujah. If you ask my wife, she'll tell you I make the best steak. I tell you, I can really make, you know, I can't fake steak. Nobody can fake real steak. But I'm going to tell you, people, there's something better than a good piece of steak. Oh, yes. Praise God. The Word of God is so succulent, so sweet. Hallelujah. It is so good. It is juice. It's like my pastor used to say, like a good piece of steak where the juice just runs down the side of his mouth. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Some of peop God's people don't even know what meat is. Amen. They're still drinking milk. Oh, praise God. He stands at the door and knocks. He's got something to share with you. He, he says, I have meat that you know not of. I have spiritual food you know not of. To him that overcometh will I grant to eat of the hidden manna. Hidden manna. Hidden food. Secret food. Are you listening? Oh, praise God. Have you not read about how David and his men ate of the showbread? It wasn't lawful for them to eat of that bread. But God would rather them eat that bread and live physically than to die. And David chose to live. He wasn't supposed to eat that show bread. Are you listening? Listen to me. Jesus said, have you not read about how they ate of the show bread and lived? That's the mercy of God. If someone else would have done that and it wasn't needed, they would have died. If the high priest would have done it, even, uh, even if the high priest would have done it, he would have died. But God allowed David to live and his men to live. Why? Because there was a need. Because there was a need. Because God is real. Because he's practical. Because God did not want them to starve to death. And brothers and sisters, I don't want you to starve. Amen. Come and dine at the table of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus said to them after his resurrection, he says, have you any meat? Come and dine. Come and dine. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come and dine, the master calls. Come and dine. You may feast at his table all the time. He fed the multitudes, turned the water into wine. Come and dine, the master calls. Come and dine. Come and dine, the master calls, come and dine. You may feast at his table all the time. He fed the multitudes, turned the water into wine. Come hungry, come thirsty, come and dine. You may feast at his table all the time. All the time. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus, how merciful he is. Amen. How merciful he is. He longs for you to come and feast at his table. He longs for you to come sup with him. Oh, he has a feast for you. 
You've been feasting on this ministry. But how many know God has a table for you? For you to come to. That he's prepared a meal just for you in him. Personal relationship. Not feeding on Brother Joseph's feast. Oh yeah, I've been sharing my feast for many years now. I've been sharing from my table for many years, but God has a place for you at the table. You can share from your plate with others. I've been sharing from my bounty. I've been sharing from my plate. Amen. Aren't you tired of living off Brother Joseph's plate? Aren't you tired of living off of what Brother Joseph is receiving from the Lord? Don't you want to come and sit down at the table of the Lord and get your own plate. Amen. And you can share that plate with others. Oh, hallelujah, brothers and sisters. It's all about coming to the table and sitting down at the table of the Lord. Hallelujah. Sitting with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Look at Mephibosheth. Look at the son of Jonathan. Amen. Mephibosheth, lame on his feet. What king would allow a lame man to sit at his table? But for Jonathan's sake, Mephibosheth was able to sit at the king's table. And the Bible says you couldn't see his legs because they were under the table. Hey, man, you couldn't tell that Mephibosheth was lame on his feet when he sat at the king's table. Hallelujah. He looked like one of the sons at the table with the other sons of David. Oh, praise God, brothers and sisters. Everything. God removes it all. Anything, any blemishes. Oh, yes. He he heals and delivers and he hides under the blood. Amen. He heals and delivers. Amen. Till he transforms. He'll hide you in the shadow of his own wings. Glory to God. Some of you are ashamed. Some of you feel like you're not worthy to come and sit at that table. In yourself, you're not. But he makes you worthy. Jonathan's a type of Jesus. And Mephibosheth is a type of you and I. We were lame on our feet, brothers and sisters. We couldn't even stand. But there was a fighting spirit inside Mephibosheth. He was a fighter. He said, David, I want to go with you on the battlefield. David said, I'd like to take you. He said, but I can't take you out there. If you fall off your horse, you won't be able to get back on. He made him stay back at the palace, but he wanted to go. He had the same spirit, that lion spirit, L-I-O-N, same spirit as Jonathan, his dad. Brothers and sisters, he's calling. The Lord is calling. Hallelujah. How many times David should have been at the king's table and instead he was afraid and he's running for his life. Instead of allowing God to protect him from the javelins of Saul, he was running, hiding. How come David didn't just take the throne? Why did he wait so long? Why do we wait? Why do we hesitate? God had already rejected Saul and David kept running from his calling, kept running from his position. He was already anointed by God. He was already chosen by God. And he ran from the throne. He ran from his position. He ran from Saul. He ran from man. He ran from the javelins. Take your position and let God reveal how powerful he is. Take your place. Go up and take your inheritance. Take your anointed positions. Amen? If God be for you, who can be against you? It's time for the saints of God to stand up and take our place. Take your place. Take your position. Hallelujah. If you've got to fight to get into your place, you fight to get there. But don't allow your candlestick not to be in its place in this hour. Amen. Oh, blessed be his holy name, people. If you've got to fight, if you've got to fight with everything within you to make sure that that candlestick is in place, fight the good fight of faith and shine for Jesus in this hour. Hallelujah. 
Oh, praise the Lord. Those candlesticks had to be fed with oil. We've got to be fed. We've got to feast. We've got to feed on the nature of God, on the divine nature, on the Spirit of God, the life of God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. More of you. More of you. I've had it all, but what I need is more of you. I've had my fill, and yet I hunger still. So empty, so bare, Lord, hear my prayer for more of you, more of you, Lord, more of you. I've had it all, but what I need is more of you. Of things I've had my fill, yet I hunger still. So empty, so bare, Lord, hear my prayer for more of you. Well, I've been all around in the houses that abound. But I found no nourishment there. My thirst drives me on. I stumble along over ground so bare. Well, there's a distraction. Front desk is calling the room while I'm trying to minister. Folks, pray that Brother Joseph finds his own place. Pray that we find our own place. God bless you.